One day, while I was in the operating room, I overheard two nurses talking. One of them said to the other, yesterday I was in the ladies' room at a restaurant, and I met this interesting woman. She said, what I had just heard was so shocking that I stopped what I was doing, put my instruments down, the patient was under general anesthesia, fortunately, and without thinking, I interrupted the nurse who was talking. I said, you talked to a stranger in the restroom? She said, sure. And she said it in such a way that it implied that such an event wasn't unusual at all for her. I shook my head and said, do other women do that? She said, all the time. I was more than 40 years old at the time, and here I was learning this stunning fact for the first time. I said, men do not speak in restrooms, ever. That experience made me think about how men interact with each other under many conditions. And I realized that there are unspoken but still rigid and powerful guidelines that govern how men relate to each other. And these guidelines tell us a lot about how men think and feel. At the risk of speaking of a subject perhaps less than refined, I'd like to share with you some of these guidelines because you'll learn a lot about the nature of men. The first general guideline, men usually speak to each other only for specific and limited reasons. To pass on information, for example, or to accomplish a clearly defined task. They call each other to order lumber, for example, or to arrange a meeting, or to negotiate the price of a product, that kind of thing. It has actually been studied and learned that if a man calls another man on the phone and doesn't come to some kind of point, an item of business, a vital piece of information, within 10 seconds, the other man will say something like, so what can I do for you? In other words, let's get down to business. The second general guideline, men gather together only to accomplish a specific task, to hold a meeting, to attend a ball game, to play softball, to put up a barbed wire fence, to chew tobacco, manly things like that. The third general guideline, if men are put in a position where they're in the same room without a specific reason to speak or work together, like waiting in a doctor's office where there's no barbed wire fence to put up, they simply do not speak. If they are absolutely trapped in close quarters, like sitting next to each other before a meeting starts, they speak only about the most superficial subjects, sports, the weather, the war in Bosnia, that kind of stuff. Nothing personal. It's these general guidelines that helped shape the very specific, time-honored and inflexible rules that govern the behavior in a men's room. And we will discuss these rules in our next session.